Hi, my friends. So today I'm going to be carrying on from my previous video from the sermon uh, last Sunday, which is on uh, the 22nd of November. Watch and see what Pastor Joseph Prince said in this video. All from grace, we, we know from Galatians, is that to go back to the law. Whoever is trying to be justified by the law, notice law is lower than, than grace, the mercy seat. Why is the law lower than grace? The law was kept inside the ark. I can also say because it was kept inside the secret safe, the secrets of most secrets, the law is holier than grace. Friends, that is called reading into the text. Don't do that. Don't do that. For you to go back to the law, you fall from grace, fall from grace, fall from grace. Is the unconditional, is the unconditional, is the unconditional, undeserved favor of God, which is grace. Grace is defined as unmerited favor. Notice you fall from the high ground. So you're trying to, you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, keep the law, but by doing that, you abandon, you desert grace, your high position. It's the unconditional, undeserved favor of God, which is grace. Grace is defined as unmerited favor. So I think from this clip, you can be able to tell for yourself whether grace is unconditional or conditional forgiveness from God. He goes on to say this. Christ becomes of no effect unto you because we are trying to be justified by the law. So in this video, he suggests that, you know, by keeping the law, even on the basis of sanctification and not justification, you have fallen from grace. This is not true. This is not true. What is true is we are justified by Christ, by His blood. That is justification. Justification is being more and more growing in holiness, through the work of the Holy Spirit, through Christ working in you, through you, to become more and more like Christ. So, uh, so what he's posturing here is that, you know, there are many churches in Singapore, and his, in fact, uh, many people in New Creation Church would believe that uh, the rest of the churches in Singapore are all law churches, not preaching uh, the true grace. But in fact, what Pastor Joseph Prince is doing here is that he has mixed up uh, with, he has mixed up what legalism is and what law abiding is. Please tell me any church in Singapore that's preaching a works based salvation based on you keeping the law, based on your own performance, you know, and what has Christ commanded us? any man or any woman who wish to follow after him, you know, to keep his commandments. There's a difference between legalism and law abiding, you know. Maybe in the 80s, Singapore had a very uh, different they background. Were a little bit more legalistic and heavy on the law. But does that mean that we should do away with any law keeping? This is a simple, basic truth. There's a difference between law abiding and legalism, you know? So let's look into the context of the Galatian church. What happened there? False teachers have convinced the Galatians that are required to be circumcised and to keep the Jewish laws to be saved. The result is division within the church, as you can see from Acts. Uh, Paul gives numerous reasons why they should return to the simple gospel truth. The Bible says that the Galatians have been bewitched into lies. But what are these lies? What were there? Number one, by believing that circumcision is necessary for salvation. Number two, by teaching them to obey, to observe the Jewish ceremonies, the supplement for faith. Has Pastor Joseph Prince ever once expounded on this fact? that they were bewitched by the issue of the Jewish laws, such as circumcision, during the, my seven years in New Creation Church? No, he lumps the whole law as a singular one. Ceremonial laws are different from moral laws. So what is the law? What kinds of law are there? Jude law? There is the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. There is the ceremonial law, which are the sacrifices. There are there is the 613 laws for the Jewish people. There is the law of conscience and the law of Christ. So what is the law of conscience? 
that you know what is right and wrong morally. It's without the written word, without the written Ten Commandments. You know what is right in your heart. You know, Romans tells us this. Us Gentiles were not given the Ten Commandments. The law is written where? On our hands? No. On our feet? No. In our hearts? In our hearts. So what is the law of Christ now? Galatians 6, Paul writes this. The law of Christ. The law of Christ is in essence overlapping with the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, the first four laws is to love God, and the next six is to love people. So they overlap one another. So if you sit under Pastor Joseph Prince's teachings, you'll feel that, wow, so sure, uh, moral law obsolete. My question to this is this, what is the law of Christ to love God? With what? Your finances only? Your serving only? No. With all your heart? With all your soul? With all your mind? With all your strength? And to love people? These laws, these commandments overlap with the law of Christ. These commandments, these laws overlap with the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. So if you say that the Ten Commandments are obsolete byproduct, you are saying that the law of Christ is obsolete also. So he is in fact teaching lawlessness because you are saying the law of Christ do not apply to a believer. Hiya! The problem with Joseph Prince's teachings is that he says that nothing you do or do not do will affect your relationship with God. This is in fact error even under the new covenant. Because why? If we do not love God, God does not know us. Apostle John tells us that his laws are not burdensome, not hard to follow. So what? Keep them. Apostle John and Apostle Paul are not against us keeping God's laws as a means of sanctification, as a means of loving God. The issue was never the moral law, but legalism and circumcision as a supplement for justification, which is heresy. So what does this mean for us today then? You know, Christ's death has brought in this new age, that we are now in a new covenant, that people don't have to become Jews or to follow our ceremonies of the Mosaic law to be Christians. The truth is that it has always being justification by faith. And by Christ's death, those who believe in him are justified from the punishment of sin. And who punishes? It is God. And it will be Christ who comes back and judges again. So in essence, salvation is justification by faith. That is what we believe in. However, the difference is that Joseph Prince doesn't believe in the importance of your obedience. He says, focus on Christ's obedience. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, what is the obedience of Christ? By one man's obedience. <laughs> All of us were made righteous. The devil wants you to take your mind off that one man's obedience and put your mind back on your obedience or the lack of it. That's warfare. And you are to demolish all these arguments, demolish every stronghold. Many of them are religious, all right? And say, no, no, it's not my obedience. Bring your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. It is his obedience. I am a police officer. Sign on one, not NS. I saw you violate the rules. I saw you violate the rules. So I have to summon you. If I don't summon you, I am violating the rules. We are justified by faith. For what purpose? To be sanctified under his doctrine of no sanctification. If you live your life like a rebel, 
you're still saved. Or he might say, you were never saved to begin with. This is not what Apostle Paul teaches. He teaches us to keep doing good works, to keep sowing to the Spirit. At the end of the letter in Galatians, works. Works perfect your faith. This is why it's written in James. The Paul tells us to stop doing good. The Paul tells us to stop doing good, to stop obeying God, to stop keeping the law. So friends, I hope the Holy Spirit wakens your inner man to these kind of false teachings by Joseph Prince and to awaken. Thank you, friends, once again for listening.